Hello, children, I see you. I'm very happy to see you. Greet your family, boogie on down. Give a clap and turn around. My name's Miss Wendy, and we're going to learn about how plants adapt for our dry and hot weather we get in Texas. We call plants that adapt for dry and hot weather xeric. That's a big brain word. So let's start with a little song. We're going to be learning one of the plants we'll learn about is a cactus. So let's make our cactus pads. Oh, the cactus, oh, the cactus with the sharp and pointy spine. Cactus fruits are called the tunas and the green pads look just fine. Yay, we're gonna learn all about lots of plants, not just cactus and how they adapt. So we learn, first of all, let's learn a little bit about cactus. And I've got a little picture here to help you. So we call these parts the pads. Those are actually like the stems or the trunks. Those little spines you see, those are actually leaves. Cactus has beautiful, this is a prickly pear, beautiful red fruits we call tunas. We're not really sure if that comes from the Spanish word aceituna, meaning olive, because it looks sort of like an olive, or the Taino word for fruit. But these are the flowers. And we are going to learn how these plants work. So one of the things you may sometimes notice, I actually put it on here. You see this little bit of white here? A lot of times you'll see white on cactus. I'm going to show you a picture. That's called cochineal. Can you see it? And in the Revolutionary War, your, your big brothers and sisters may know about that, the red coats actually had their coats dyed with a dye from this cochineal, which is a scale insect. We also make food like pomegranate juice and some lipsticks using cochineal. Now, let's take a look at this cactus and we're going to try to find all the parts of the cactus. So here's my cactus, the spines of the leaves, here are the flowers, you can see what a big one looks all together. Then here we said the fruits were the tunas and you see all these little, the pads are the stems, all these little hairs I'm going to show you in a second. Those are the, the bumps are called the aerials. And that's where everything grows from the cactus. So I want to show you how much I love cactus. I have a cactus painting. I have cactus stickers. And I have cactus candles which will really to help me teach you about some of the ways cactus will save water. They might have rosettes. You can see the rosettes here. So that all the water goes right down to the root or ribs. You can see the ribs here. So all the water goes right down to the roots. So I can show you a plant with rosettes, can you see? So all the water would go right down to the roots. And I can show you a plant, this is a cactus with, this is a barrel shaped cactus with ribs. And you can see how that would direct all the waters to the roots. Now, if you look at this cactus, you can see the spines, but I wanna be able to show you the aerials because that's where the fruits and the flowers and the spines and even the new pads grow from. So this is a trya. And if you look carefully, you see those bumps? And if you look at some of the bumps, you can actually see, let me see if I can get this in the camera. You can see the little spiny hairs growing out of it. 
And you can see how the new arms of this cactus grew out of these little bumps. Now, one of the ways that cactus is very efficient for saving water, and I'm gonna show you this with my tasajillo, we call it a pencil cactus or a Christmas cactus, because it, this one isn't blooming, but it will at Christmas time when this one is bigger, this is a baby, it will have little red tunas that look like red Christmas ornaments. It also looks like a pencil, that's what we call it, a pencil cactus. But you can see how this whole trunk or stem is green to do big word alert, photosynthesis. That means that it's making energy and it has to, it's not gonna waste any energy on bark and things like that. It's gonna make energy with the whole plant. So you can see that. I also wanna show you over here, another way that cactuses save themselves water and keep themselves cool. Can you see the hairs on this grandfather cactus? Here's another one. We're good. This is going to be a treat because I hopefully can show you some tunas. This is a mammillaria cactus and you can see it has hairs that shades it and keeps the plant cool. Now, if you look carefully in there, you're gonna see a little tuna, a little fruit. I've got another little one, but they're really tiny because this is a tiny plant. So I'm not sure if I can get that one. There we go, in the camera. Now, here's another example of a plant that's using its hairs to shade the cactus and keep it, can you see this? This is a lace cactus to keep it cool, just like we might put up a parasol. Another way that plants are able to keep themselves cool and save water is to develop what we call succulents. Succulents means that it's sort of waxy. And then if you were to cut a piece of this off, like you do with an aloe, then it might be sort of wet and juicy inside. So succulents, think of it as being juicy. This is a Christmas cactus. And I have a white one, which is called an Easter cactus because of when it blooms, which is more in the spring. Here is another example of how plants keep themselves saving water. So this, it's actually something big. This is a big word. You don't have to remember it, euphorbia crown of thorns. You can see the leaves are really waxy. And that's another way that the plant saves water. Now, let's look right here. Before I go to my biggest cactus, the one you're familiar with, the prickly pear, do you see this is a citronella? And you see how deeply toothed we say, how deeply broken up the leaves are? That's another way that plants save water. Some plants escape, that's like a blue bonnet. It blooms when it's, and germinates and is making new things when it's cool and wet. And then it recedes all over the place. And then it escapes until the next time it's ready to bloom. Some plants evade, that means high. You've probably seen rain lilies. They've got sort of tubers or bulbs with things like, you know, garlic and onions and potatoes where they store water and they come out and bloom when it's wet. So that's like hiding until they're ready to come out. But cactuses endure, they endure. They can go through all weathers. That's why we can teach cactus in this cold weather right now. Now, this is the cactus you're most familiar with. This is the prickly pear. So you can see the pads, nice flat pads. We can eat these, nopales, nopalitos. 
and you can see the aerials on them there. Especially you can see it along this part. You can see the spines. Remember we said spines are actually leaves. What a surprise. I thought they were just prickly things. So this is the cactus we see very frequently in San Antonio and in Hard River Park. Now, I am going to show you three of my favorite cactus books. This book is called Cactus Charlie. And it's about a cactus who's very lonely. Nobody wants to be his friends. Why do you think that would be? Would you want to hug a cactus? I don't think so. So this book is about how Charlie finally finds a friend. Can you think of an animal that might be sort of prickly? Hmm, maybe that's going to be his friends. I have another book about a cactus trying to find a friend that solves that problem in a different way. Hug me. Nobody wants to hug that poor cactus. The cactus tries to make friends with the balloon and then it pops and everybody is angry at the cactus. But finally the cactus finds a friend. Oops. And that friend is a rock, because a rock wouldn't mind getting prickled. Now we're going to be doing an art project in just a few minutes about a cactus hotel. Did you know that all sorts of things could live in a cactus? So we're going to be doing a cactus hotel. And I am going to first do a story that we can also sing as a song. So before I do that, I want to show you some of the things we talked about. Remember, we talked about the ribs. We talked about the rosettes. We talked about the hairs. We talked about waxy leaves breaking up leaves. There's some more ribs. We talked about, oh, cactuses do all their energy making at night when it's cool. So here we have the broken up leaves. Some plants will drop their leaves, the hairy ones. There's the rosette. And there is more waxy leaves. We all know about the live oak. So those are ways we want to remember that plants keep themselves cool and moist. So we're going to read the story of Casey Cactus. I'm a little cactus, pet's green and flat. My pads are my stems, just think of that. My spines are my leaves, I think they're cute. And my flowers are yellow and my tunas are the fruit. And there we go. So let's try singing that all together. I'm a little cactus that's green and flat. Oh, my spines are my leaves, just think of that. What are we going to do? Oh, my pads are my them stems. Just think of that. My spines are my leaves. I think they're cute. My flowers are yellow and my tunes are the food. So now let's look at some of the ways we are going to learn more about cactus. So we can play a game. I spy plants hot and dry. I spy hot and dry. So we're going to take a Xeric walk 
you can do this around your house, but I'm going to tell you how to do it. And you're going to find plants that have spines, plants that have waxy leaves or stems, broken up edges on their leaves, tiny leaflets, hairs, rosettes, plants that come out when it rains. So you can take a walk and discover plants that are zero. Now I tried to make cactus in lots of very different ways. So first I made it from a paper towel roll. So I could make my stem and my pads showing. Then I thought, oh, I could use pipe cleaners to make my cactus flower and my cactus tunas. And then I thought, hmm, I can make a cactus out of Play-Doh. So I used beads and I used toothpicks. There's another one. This one I used just more Play-Doh. And then I made a cactus puppet. I thought, well, it's sort of prickly to put on, but here's my cactus puppet with a flower and a tuna and lots of spines. But we said that a cactus could be a cactus hotel. So it can be a hotel in lots of different ways. It can provide shelter. It can provide a place for pollinating. It can provide food even. Some animals, I know the deer where I live eat our cactus. So it even can be food. So it's like a cactus hotel with a cafeteria and a bedroom. So let's see how we could do a cactus hotel. Well, first of all, I can cut out a big picture of a cactus like this. And then I can cut out pictures of lots of animals that might use a cactus, maybe for shade, maybe for food. I have a snake, a spider, a bunny, a squirrel, a coyote a lizard, a butterfly, and a bird. Maybe they're gonna make, you saw that bird in my picture, was actually making a nest in the cactus. And then I glued them all together on my cactus to make a cactus hotel. I also can engineer cactus. So I can take my picture and I can color it. I can put on toothpicks. I can put on, I use sequins for this one to be the fruit and the tuna. And I can make a cactus that way. And you know me, I like to do a lot of cactus snacks. So first, I'm going to show you some of my healthy vegetable snacks. Look at this celery. I thought it looked like a organ pipe cactus that you see in Arizona. And then I took a cucumber and some gummy worms, and I made a cactus with some toothpicks. I could have used other fruits and vegetables like a pear. That would have made a good shaped cactus, sort of a little bit like a barrel cactus. I could have used a green pepper and cut it into strips to make a cactus. I could have put my toothpicks into an avocado. That would have looked like a good cactus or even cut it open and use the inside of the avocado to design a cactus. And of course, I made lots of cactus cookies. So 
I wanted to make sure this one has pretzel spines and you can see the tunas and the flower. Then I made lots using frosting. So this one shows the flower and the little tiny mini chips are the spines. Then I wanted to make one that had just the tunas. So you would remember that the tunas are the fruits. And then I made one that had fruits and flowers. So those are my cactus cookies. Then I made some cactus snacks with, I had to use food coloring to color my cream cheese. And then I use Skittles to be the flowers and the tunas on this one. And on this one, I used, I used cranberries for the tunas. They're not looking very red at the moment, but they are red. And I use golden raisins for the flowers. So I made lots of different snacks because I like you to think about how many different ways could we make snacks? We can make snacks with fruits and vegetables and frosting and cookies and rice cakes, lots of different ways. So today we learned about cactus. We learned about other xeric plants, that is plants that are able to survive, that means live, even when it's very hot and very dry and they have lots of different adaptations. We remember some of them like the hairs and the waxy leaves and the rosette shape and the ribs. You can see the ribs even on this lace cactus, which also has hairs. You can see the ribs going down the sides there. So now we know why it is that when we are not seeing a whole lot of flowers, we can still see cactus. So let's end with our cactus song and then we'll do our goodbye songs. Oh, the cactus, oh, the cactus with, oh, can you see there? Oh, the cactus, oh, the cactus with the green and, oh, beautiful pads and pointy spines. There we go. So let's go ahead and sing. I'm gonna pull this out very quickly here. Here we go. Show you the picture. Oh, the cactus, oh, the cactus, feel the sharp and pointy spines. The cactus fruits are called the tunas and the green pads look just fine. So now let's sing our goodbye song. Shake hands with family, it's time to go. Shake hands with family, it's time to go. Shake hands with family, it's time to go. We hope you'll be back soon. And before we say goodbye, remember, there's always something going on at Hardberger Park. On weekends, there's something every Saturday, but there's even things during the week. There's growing up wild and an art in the park. And on the second Saturday, you can get your grab and go bags to go with the lesson. So remember to check out your calendar on Hardburger Park Conservancy. So, Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, children. It's time to say goodbye. Now it's time to say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Now it's time to say bye bye. I'll see you again next month. We're going to be learning about why we need seeds. <laughs>